Hey, wait, can you hear us? Yes, perfectly. How are you? Hey, hello, my friend. How are you? And you okay, look I, and you look so much uh, more gentleman and nicer from a closer look. Yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, I you wanted to show you, this like is the, uh, <laughs> the new Revolution watch bar. So we have a whole oh, bar cool. here. And then uh, we have the watch finder watches over there. So, and then we have the Omega Moon Man. Uh, My gosh. Tailoring. That's beautiful, by the it's way. It's a fully functional bar. Where, 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 where are you exactly? In, in which part of, uh, of the city? Simple. We're in a neighborhood called Jalan Kilang, but it's uh, like okay. it's kind of um, used to be, I guess, industrial. Now it has become gentrified and it's become quite hipster as well. So we have okay. like a hipster coffee shop in our building. It's it's nice, you know. Ah, it's when good. you when you're able to come to Singapore, we please, let's let's uh, we would love to invite you. I do that. I do that for sure because from my time in Singapore in '94, indeed. Uh, uh, it was more the industrial uh, area. I have not yes, seen yet absolutely. the evolution, so I'll be looking forward to it. And Laurent, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. Um, uh, welcome to Mont Blanc. That's that's uh, it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So it looks, it looks like we are not looking at you, but my the screen is uh, on the right and the camera is on the left. So I'm trying to look well, at you. Have to introduce so you. No, you, you have nothing to do. With, oh, oh, great. Ah, lovely, lovely, lovely. Wow. Animation. What's the name? Uh, her name is Bandit. Uh huh. Okay. Because she has a little mask. Yes. <laughs> lovely. So, guys, I, I have to say, I really love the watches. They're very cool. Um, let's start maybe with the Geosphere. I know. <laughs> She loved it. She loved it as well. Um, created this watch in several different editions. Um, yes, I think the edition last year was really uh, nice because it was a totally different character with this uh, titanium and this blue. It's very cold. Um, but this year you've come with something that uh, is uh, inspired by Reinhold Meisner, walking two thousand kilometers through the desert. Tell us a little bit about the conversation with Reinhold. Tell us a little bit. I know, I know you mentioned that he found this even more challenging, and he learned really much more about the character of time throughout this period. Tell us about that uh, conversation with him, please. Well, you're right to say, I, I think uh, I love this watch because it's uh, going from a vertical to a horizontal uh, challenge, but uh, showing also uh, how complex it is. Um, yesterday, I had the opportunity uh, to do a, a panel talk uh, uh, that will be uh, featured on Watches and Wonders uh, uh, a digital platform uh, when it starts in uh, April uh, 7. And, um, and, um, and I have to say, uh, I I mean, we knew, of course, uh, Reinhold, as we have already had a, a, a great uh, a, a great collection with him this year. But I have to say, the guy is amazing, and um, and the, and the guy is really um, he's charismatic, he's uh, passionate, very humble. But you can tell that uh, basically, uh, I take a, a backpack, I went into the desert, I was alone, uh, and I and I knew I had to move on and carry on and uh, and hopefully uh, meet some. Uh, some uh, local people that will give me food and uh, and and water because I didn't I could not carry enough, and the way he thinks, the way he approach, the philosophy of life, uh, I think the I enjoyed a lot. I have to say the the conversation and it was uh, it was uh, almost like a live conversation to a certain extent. As uh, of course, he's not a he's not a marketing guy, so it's not like he's going to work on a text, and and uh, he's just telling his uh, what his heart uh, believes. Uh, and um, and I think that the, the collaboration and the way that the watch has been developed, really matching these stories, uh, his experience, what he what he had, uh, and uh, and how to make it live uh, in in the watch uh, was really interesting. And um, and you will see that there are a lot of on top of it technical elements, huh? from this uh, uh, micro blasted, sun blasted. Uh, 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 part uh, on the on the side of the uh, on the case uh, uh, from this amazing uh, laser engraving. It's really uh, I don't know if you've seen it on large surface before, but it is really impressive. And uh, and I can tell you um, and and when you talk to him and he explains to you uh, what it means to be uh, in this uh, part of the Gobi Desert and uh, uh, a little bit where dinosaurs uh, used to live 80 million years ago and uh, and uh, I mean it makes all sense and uh, and that's what I love in that in that uh, in that watch. In you know Amazing. that you know Mont Blanc is not too much marketing, and I think the, the genuine uh, and uh, story, and uh, is uh, was translated in a beautiful way uh, in the watch. If I may Fantastic. say, uh, you you may sir, and I think you are right. And, and Laurel, <laughs> if I may ask you, I think the geosphere occupies a very interesting niche 
in watchmaking and that it is a, there's a functional element to it, but there's also a poetic element to it as well, yeah. right? The functionality is from being able to tell time in different time zones, but the, the poetic nature of it is to be able to see the world rendered from both um, hemispheres and turning in the correct directions, incidentally, if you're witnessing them from space, and to be able to see also all the different continents um, united in this one, one, one amazing world that we live in, and also uh, to be able to have this incredible light signature when the watch is in the dark as well. Tell us about the expressive possibilities of the geosphere and where you can take it from, about the watch this year and where else you can take it from here. So the geosphere collection is a very interesting collection because it's based on exploration. And exploration is what uh, drives us. It's like passion, first of all. And uh, once you want to explore, which is good, is you can explore a lot of different things. With that, just we were explored the glaciers, the mountains. Uh, we did it for the forest as well and desert. And next year, we'll do it in the... So something is coming for next year as well, as you have mentioned. There is, um, it's a process. Yeah, you will. And you, I'm sure how you look like when uh, I, I know your story and everything we have met and I can tell you something. The next product will be probably a product for you, 100%. When you will hear about the story, you will love it. And um, this is what we want to do. We still keep the limited editions because we think that exploration is uh, something not open to everybody. So we have to limit it as well. That's why it's a limited edition. And uh, what is key is the connection between uh, one personality and one product. It means the watch should be like a book. And when you have a look at the watch, it's like reading a book about something with no mistakes and a true story. That's exactly how we want to develop this collection in the future. Amazing. And I agree with you. I, I agree with you, Way. I think the, the, the poetic uh, uh, expression is much stronger than the functional uh, element. And uh, which is why yeah, I, so this, which is why we like it. We know we know how much functionality is just an excuse uh, very often in the watchmaking. So so I think that that's a that's a very good excuse for that one. And totally, totally yeah. Yeah, and there, there is something, you know, we, we have mentioned the perfection uh, in, in, in my previous speech. Perfection is something very simple for watchmaking. Perfection is not when there is something more to add, but perfection is when there is nothing to remove from a product. And when you have a look at the 1850 geosphere, there is nothing you can take back. That's why it's perfect product. I love that. And, you know, I, I would say a watch that really embodies this very pure perspective is, of course, a watch that's got a very pure name, the origin, right? Mm -hmm. And so I love the fact that in, in your first collection with Mont Blanc Laurent, you took it back to the roots and you showed us a super iconic officer style um, chronograph with probably one of the most iconic chronograph movements ever created. I love also the officer case back. I love the fact that, well, I think you did it also for the geosphere. You're using mm -hmm. bronze, but also you're using. You know, that's treated to look like bronze as well. And then it also gives you the opportunity to, to do this really complicated laser engraving as well. But tell us a little bit about that and tell us about your journey into the past and about, um, uh, about your awakening with Minerva. It's a very interesting point because when we say back to the history, if you pay attention to the history of mini manufacturers in Switzerland, it was not like a linear path. It was cut, disappeared, reappeared, and so on. Minerva, since 1858, it's one path, discontinued. So it's perfect, I would say. And um, when we pay attention to the museum, we have more than 1,000. Uh, one question, did you visit uh, the museum, uh, the Minerva Museum or not? Wait, did you come to Villeray? Did you? Yeah, you did, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. you did it, okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect, excellent. Alone or with your dog? So uh, I, came, um, I came by myself, but I was greeted by uh, some of the people from the, the manufacturer. Okay, because yesterday we had a dog, the one from uh, Ronald Messner, who has visited the museum as well. <laughs> so it was the first dog visiting <laughs> Villeray. So now it's open, you can do it as well with your dog. So we are oh, looking forward to meeting you and your dog as well. <laughs> so, and uh, the history is key, because the history, it's, it's about emotion. And at Minerva, we have this history. We have a chance to have a museum with 1,000 wristwatches, pocket watches, and so on. And the history will help build the future. You cannot build something from zero and expecting to create emotion. Emotion comes from the past, from past experiences. It's exactly what we want to use, but not only for the mineral collections, but inside all the collections as well. Because even if you pay attention to the 1858, the way we finished the product, it's inspired by the high watchmaking. 
And the high watchmaking, it is Minerva. So Minerva is expanding in terms of high quality to the world collections we have. So this is the past, which is inspiring now the future. Fantastic. And, and you know, talking about that wonderful Minerva movement, um, as, uh, let's talk also about an even more complicated version of this watch this year with a material uh, that is, I think, proprietary. It's called Lime Gold. As someone that drinks a lot of tequila, uh, Nicola, I, I like limes. Um, so tell us about why you decided to create your own alloy. And I have to say this watch is killer looking. It's absolutely stunning. You know, I, I think it's a very interesting watch because... <laughs> It's, it's bridging uh, what you were just mentioning, huh, which is the heritage, uh, which is the, because of the movement. Huh, and, and that's not the first time that we are presenting this split uh, chronograph and uh, with, this, uh, with this scale and the, and the snail uh, and, uh, and, and, the, and, the whole, uh, and the whole story about uh, uh, the heritage movement. But at the same time, uh, uh, I think it's important to be able to come up with a completely different perspective. And the fact that uh, uh, we make it much more modern uh, more contemporary, working on the material, uh, which is not so easy. And, uh, and, and Laurent can explain the detail of the, of the, of the lime gold and how, to, how it was created. Um, and the complete different also uh, face of the watch. Uh, I think it's, it, will, it will talk to a complete different uh, set of, um, of, of watch passion, passionate. And, um, and uh, I don't think we have the same customer from that one to uh, the other one that bought the former uh, speed chronograph. So... And that's what I really like in that story, is really this um, uh, making it a bit more bold, at least for a maison like Montblanc, and going into a dimension that is, uh, 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 that is maybe un, uh, unforeseen uh, for Montblanc. And the fact that we make it very limited also uh, create, we, I'm sure we create this uh, attraction as it's 18 pieces, and that's it. So uh, yeah, I, I'm really excited. I was going to ask you about that. It's 18 watches. You know, you're going to have probably... 180 people wanting to buy these watches, you know, not tempted to make a couple more? Yeah, I, was, I don't know, you know, I'm, maybe I, I have no background of sales guy, so that's why I decided to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I'm going to tell you, that, that watch is killer. You know, that, that movement, that rock pot that you have, that's the second chronograph, um, first of all, that movement's got an incredible history to it. Second of all, it's so beauty, beautiful in terms of its architecture. And then third of all, Actually, if you think about it, because I believe the price is 49,000 Swiss francs, you were saying something mm -hmm. like that, yeah. you know, it's incredible as a value, honestly. Like it, there are, you know, watches that are kind of the equivalent that are going for at least, I would say three times as much. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's probably one of the best values in horology. And I think it's a stunning watch and a beautiful design. So thank you, Wade. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So talk about, oh, I don't know if we are able to talk about this, but, uh, but the, I saw a really cool looking movement during the presentation, right? So one, one thing that I love is I love movements that have straight bridges and that have like sharp internal angles. And when I saw this picture on the screen, uh, initially it was in the modern watch and I was like, what the hell is that? It's so cool. And then I saw the movement that it was based on. So the heritage Pythagory, is it Py is that my Pythagore, yeah. Yeah, because it's Pythagore. Pythagore. Yeah. Yeah. Pythagore. I have the feeling that um, uh, the Pythagore is again uh, part of the of the Minerva uh, history. Was extremely successful. There has not been too many uh, of these uh, movements uh, created. It's a beautiful. Uh, it's it's an amazing movement, and I fully agree with you. Uh, this story of the golden ratio uh, and, uh, and and the way that you have uh, the, the 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 geometry and the and the perfect uh, geometry, uh, uh, the, the the perfect. Uh, uh, space between uh, the different bridges uh, and, and and components, uh, uh, the the ratio between the the lengths, the widths, and so on, is is the whole story about Pythagore. <clears throat> and I think you could write a book about that uh, that movement. And uh, and for the watch uh, again, enthusiasts and collectors, uh, it's going to be amazing. The fact that we could rebuild it, we work the whole movement, enlarge it, so that when you uh, we we did it, you remember the LE LE thirty eight that was just the um, uh, using the last 38 movement that we had found uh, at uh, Villeray and restoring them. But uh, from that, we have rebuilt, uh, we <coughs> reconstruct the, the caliber, make it bigger. And, uh, and when you see the watch uh, in the same size, uh, in 39 millimeter, and you turn it and you see the movement, uh, I think it's one of the most amazing uh, movement that we have uh, from a pure aesthetic point of view. And, um, and, uh, and I believe it can be the beginning of a, of a longer story uh, in, in, in this kind of uh, uh, entry level of the, of the Minerva uh, movements uh, at Mont Blanc. And, and I would say aesthetic, uh, if I may, aesthetic is linked to um, 
I would say perfection. Perfection is linked to the golden ratio. Because I will explain to you something. If you pay attention to the space between the different bridges we have, we'll always have the same space in between, 0 0.25. So it means, you know, e even the perfection is even in the space in between the different uh, plates and bridges. It does not exist in the watchmaking industry. And everything is based on this 1.618 number, which is the uh, golden... Uh, Golden, um, it's, it's, it's the golden, golden ratio, but from an aesthetic point of view as well. We are also using it for one of our writing instruments. And, uh, and it's really, uh, you have to imagine thinking of the development of a movement based uh, on proportions that have to be respected on all parts, and, uh, which is a yes. kind of a crazy challenge. But, uh, but the way uh, it turns out, uh, I think it's going to be a killer as well, I have to say. And uh, each man... Because yeah. I think Pythagoras, Pythagoras, the, the theory, the golden ratio. Yes, of, of course. Uh, of fortune. Yes. Of course. So it's yeah. an architecture. It's an ancient Greek architecture. A exactly. The human body. And That's yeah. why I said you can use it from an uh, from a design architectural point of view in many different ways. And uh, and that's the, the beauty is to have incorporated it into uh, into the development of a caliber. So I think it's it's really a, a, an amazing story and a bit of a uh, yeah a bit of a secretive story if I may say. A few, a few people know about it. Uh, it's, it, it has sold uh, very well in the past, but uh, it was a little bit. Uh, but there's, there are very few pieces available, in fact, and uh, and uh, and I and I believe uh, uh, maybe a route uh, that we could take for uh, for the future for creating new movements uh, also uh, at Minerva. Nicola, what's the price of the Peter Wong? It's eighteen thousand five hundred. Eighteen one eight. One eight. Yeah. It's uh, you know what it's fantastic because and, and I and it, when I look at it, it it brings to mind the most sort of sub sublime pure watches I can think of you know um, and, and and the movement is absolutely killer uh, if, if you if you want to do something together I think we can do something on the Peter it's it, it's it's killer it's a killer. second reason to come to Singapore I'm looking forward to it <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the last thing that I, um, I would ask you is uh, is Nicola. Tell us a little bit about what attracted you to, uh, to bringing Laurel on board. And Laurel, tell us what attracted you to the opportunity in Mont Blanc, please. Uh, for, for me, uh, it, was, it was a pretty simple uh, uh, decision, I have to say. Um, what I like uh, with Laurent and his, uh, not just his personality, but also his expertise uh, or, or his past, his experience, is the fact that uh, he has a complete understanding of, of, uh, of watchmaking. And the fact that he understands uh, uh, what it is, the, the complexity and intricacy of, uh, of uh, working uh, and, uh, when he created his, uh, his, his, uh, his uh, small uh, brand, and, but had to, do it, had to take care of everything. I think he understands uh, this complexity, and especially here when you talk Minerva, huh? you know you've been here. It's not like we have uh, 500 guys working in uh, Villeray, and uh, it's a tiny uh, team. It's, uh, it's a kind of... Um, uh, yeah, it's a kind of a startup kind of company to a certain extent, in a very traditional uh, way, of course. And at the same time, uh, the world is changing fast. Uh, you need to be involved in many aspects, um, the, and, and the business part of the business of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the job is also very important. And the fact that uh, Laurent has a strong understanding of uh, not business from a sense of uh, just of creating sales, uh, even though it was his job before, but business in the sense of understanding what are the uh, watch collectors and the watch enthusiasts uh, looking for, and what can we, what is it that will interest them, and that's that's what for me was very important in the recruitment as well of uh, of Laurent. Uh, thank you, Nicolas. On my side, I would say that um, um, it's all about human beings. So it means that uh, the first time we have met, uh, my feeling was excellent, and I always uh, follow my instinct, frankly speaking. Because but, but not, not the second time. Yeah. <laughs> only the first. Only the first. Only the first time. But the third time it was good as well. So, um, and uh, I really think that you have to follow your instinct, and if you have the feeling you can have very good um, understanding with with someone, you have to trust yourself, and you have to to do it. And it's exactly. It was my impression after. I have to say, one minute, I was positive about it. I remember it was in Lausanne, nice hotel. It was, uh, the hotel was quite close. It was, but everything was perfect. This is my opinion. Then as I met the team, it was an uh, excellent experience for me as well. And uh, I was convinced that it was the right way for me. And it's in between the, 
The independent brands, uh, the small ones I've mentioned, I, I created doing everything. It's in between uh, this brand and the Boucher experience, more structure. So this is perfect. I just like I would just like to add something. It's very hard to find the perfect men in this world. It's harder, perhaps, to find the perfect women in this world. <laughs> Joking, but the perfect no. movement, <laughs> the perfect movement, does exist by Minerva. And with the proportion with the Pythagore, we have something really, really, really good. And I'm convinced that uh, in the next three, four, five years, we can develop a lot of things together. Of course, keeping what we have, but creating more differentiation inside the watch. I, I don't know what I'm showing, so. If, are, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm too proud, you'll meet. Oh wow, that's fantastic! Um, that movement is stunning. I can tell you, and and if you see the two in the white gold and in the in the pink gold on top of it, uh, wow. there's a, a very different, yeah. uh, a very different aesthetic as well, and um, an expression, and and I think also client for sure, and um, so, but uh, but I have to say. I mean, I, lo I love the yeah. I love the thirteen twenty one or the sixteen twenty nine. I mean, all the, the all the chronograph at uh, at Minerva. I, I think it's amazing, but but that's a, that's also a new league. And um, and uh, definitely, uh, let's talk together, away. If there is something, you know, uh, as I said, it's the beginning of a story. So that's definitely something yeah. we could we could talk about and see uh, what we could do together. Nicolas, I love that movement. I think it's incredible. The the watch is going to be a killer. I would love to do something. Okay, we'll talk. With pleasure. Thank you, my Thank brother. You. Thank, Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thank you for time. Thanks yes. again. Well, Thank you. you again. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Thank See you. you soon. Thanks again, Weya. Ciao, ciao. Thank you.